Greetings from Goblin Valley, Nisedal, Norway. I'm here, so you don't have to be. Those of you who know me might ask, what are you doing in the carpenter's shop in the basement? Uh, two things. I'm going to review the Aeronaut version 2.5, 24mm and I'm hiding from the dragon. Yes, it's time for Christmas cleaning and I've done all my chores and the whole list like tornado in order to make this review for you today. But she didn't like it very much. So um, she thinks I'm cleaning my workshop. Uh, but instead we are doing this and then we'll sneak out and look at the photos from my airflow chamber because this time I had to, to simulate uh, the conditions inside this one uh, because I had a sneaking suspicion that I wanted to either confirm or, or, or um, strike uh, away. So uh, we will be looking a bit closer on this one, as long as I dare, and then we'll look at some, uh, some pictures. I, I wish I could show you uh, li uh, live foot footage from my airflow chamber, but you know, as per usual, I stumble upon a phenomenon that um, was very counterintuitive and uh, let's say I choose not to share that with all of you just yet. But we'll look at stills and they are highly informative about this, uh, this uh, splendid Aeronaut version 2.5 24mm. This is not going to be your usual uh, review. Um, for the mentioned <laughs> reasons, <laughs> but mainly because let's concentrate on on the cool uh, cool stuff rather because the the main thing about the aeronaut is of course the airflow, and let's just mention that you get an extra um, uh, top cap to put your five ten connection in. You get uh, O rings, screws, and um, Yes, a squonk pin, and you get uh, metal cylinders to put in that has no air holes in order for you to be able to block off the airflow in the lower or upper uh, tube altogether as you may see fit. And the screwdriver. And this is how it looks up close and personal. You have an airflow tube up here that goes across like so with a hole in the middle pointing down. And then one centimeter, 10 millimeters below, you have this tube with an air hole pointing up. And yes, of course, they can be um, adjusted individually. It, it basically comes in three parts, the uh, top cap, uh, the middle part and the deck. Here you see the uh, tube with air holes that points down. You cannot see the air holes from this view. So we'll open it up further. As you can see, the top of this middle part is uh, very coned and narrowing towards the top. And you can see the three slits in the upper tube uh, that is pointing uh, down when you use it from here. And combined they are nine square millimeters. They are approximately one times three millimeters each of these uh, slits. That's an important number to remember because the deck uh, the air hole here and the one that comes up under this coil. Yes, 
friends, you see correctly, this is a Clapton coil. And I will explain about that in a few secs. Now, the um, air tube on this version 2.5 is perpendicular to your coil. It has an opening that is 3 times 5 millimeters. So that is an opening of 15 square millimeters. So it's 40% bigger than the one coming down from the top. And that is very important to get an overall pressure back up and to the drip tip. The difference between version 1 and 2, and especially between number 2 and 2.5, is the spring is gone and the uh, swiveling action thingy is gone and uh, the airflow is perpendicular. And it's also been moved a bit because some of you reported whistling sounds. So the air hole is actually a bit offset this time. Dimensions and materials and extras and details you can find at their website. I'll give you a link to the place where you order this stuff. And there you have much better pictures than this. So let's just head on to the fun stuff and watch some pictures together if I manage to sneak my way undiscovered by the dragon. <laughs> First of all, if you haven't seen my um, airflow in RDA uh, videos and tutorials and know how I work, please do so, because I'm uh, I uh, I um, work normally to scale ten to one scale in my airflow chamber and I uh, simulate the conditions. I basically build an artificial RDA in a scale 10 to 1 and watch how the air behaves. Uh, the suction coming from where it should and air openings coming from where they should. In my other video, the uh, flat wire coils versus Clapton coils part 3, I succeeded in simulating the airflow over actual coils in a scale one to one. That means these are actual coils experiencing actual airflow in the proper speed at which we wape. That has to do with a lot of other videos I made, but, uh, but uh, you just have to accept the facts here. If your coil is a flat or you use regular round wire or if you use Clapton coils with very very fine wrapping wire 40 to 44 gauge the air will behave as we see in the picture to the left. The air will flow around your coil, it will gather behind the coil and it will continue on its merry way until it meets some kind of blockage. It doesn't matter where you suck from, if it's from the side or top or wherever you suck from, this is how the air will behave around a flat wire coil when you create a low pressure situation in the chamber. On coarse clapton wires to the right and uh, the twisted wires and creative uh, clapton wires, tigered claptons, uh, staggered claptons, stapled claptons, or what you, whatever you have, or coarse claptons, um, uh, or if you have a use uh, ribbon wire twisted in, or you know all that stuff, then the air will behave li almost like they're hitting a wall. And you can see at the picture on the right that the air is spreading out to the side, not gathering. These two things is very important to keep in mind when we will look at the two stills from the simulation of the Aeronaut version 2.5. This image, these are the two images I choose to show you. As you can see, these are scale 10 to 1. 
The uh, vacuum cleaner this time is uh, at the top as they are in this RDA and you have a um, pipe over the top with the hole pointing down towards the coil. This hole is 3 by 3 centimeter. It is not cut up in three slits uh, because I couldn't make the, um, the uh, pipe go the other way. But this will give a more concentrated and powerful airflow than three separate uh, slits. So uh, this, this should actually be better. Uh, or, well, you will understand this concept when we go a bit further. At the bottom, where do you see a vapor coming in from the bottom? There is a hole that is 5 by 3 centimeters perpendicular to the coil. I managed to put some vapor just in a center stream to, to look at the flow around the coil because that was the impart, important part for me. Let us watch the image to the left. Now because uh, the airflow on the upper tube is coming in from only one side. If I should have air coming into that tube from both sides I would have to destroy my stage and uh, my air chamber and I was not willing to do that. So you will see that where the vapor leaves the top of the coil it bends slightly to the right. And that is due to that fact. Now there is not more air coming through that top hole if you have opening on both sides or only one side. The restriction is the opening of the hole above the coil. So as you can see on the picture to the left, the air coming in from the bottom uh, there are uh, because of the bigger hole 5 by 3 millimeter actually on the RDA but in this instance 5 by 3 centi centimeter that air because they, it follows around the coil it managed to push off the air coming down from the top so the air coming down from the top meant to cool the top of your coil is actually working against the airflow and against the cooling of the vapor by creating a um, turbulence on top of the coil instead of the round flow we saw in the former picture. If you look at the picture on the right, the situation is very different. I managed to make a, a simulated Clapton uh, coil in the 10 to 1 uh, scale and made the air behave in the controlled experiment I've done earlier. Um, I knew this would behave exactly like in the 1 to 1 scale. And as you can see now the top hole where there is coming clear air. You can see a big clear cleared area on the top of the Clapton coil, Clapton simulated coil. And you see from the way from the bottom is spread almost straight out to the sides, at least on the right side, because as I told you, the flow from the top hole is slightly asymmetrical. But you see the flow from the top has no problems coming down and pushing away the turbulence that already existed behind this coil and providing it with a steady, concentrated, effective flow of air. That is the important lesson from this experiment. Yes, this Aeronaut version 2.5 RDA will give the users of rough Clapton coils or advanced Clapton coils or just share crazy builds, a flavor experience 
similar, similar to what we who use flat wire coils and regular wire coils experiences in almost every RDA where we can put the airflow directly on our coils. This aeronaut is for you crazy people. <laughs> Yeah, I know this is not the best review of a fantastic RDA, but I think we should all do what we are uh, good at. It, it serves no purpose that, that I try to talk about metal and dimensions and stuff like that, uh, because other people get stuff all the time and reviews hundreds of RDAs and are much more better uh, equipped and, 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 and has the reviewing of stuff much better in than, than I have. But what I can contribute is of course the airflow and airflow patterns and, and stuff like that. So um, uh, I, I hope you are satisfied by, by uh, watching my analysis and you can do with that with whatever you want. But uh, talking about um, uh, specializing, um, I, I don't know if you remember an RDA called the Cosmonaut or CSMNT. I have got uh, several questions on different forums. How would you uh, put your coils in that one? And I told them uh, it, that RDA is meant for running hot. It has protections against heat, it's built into the system. It's meant to be dense and very hot vapor. It has spatter protection and it has uh, um, uh, spaces that prevent contact uh, and transferring heat and, and stuff. So, so it's meant to run hot. hot. And, and why, why try to make a thing that is meant for something, do something completely else or opposite. It makes no sense. And this RDA is the same thing. For a flat wire coil user, you would block up off the top airflow that points down. And you basically end up with half a Kennedy. It makes no sense. But for all of you who I call crazy people, <laughs> who, who uses uh, Clapton coils, which are most of the advanced vapors use Clapton coils. I think you shouldn't, but you do. Uh, this this uh, RDA gives you the cold, but dense, uh, flavor rich experience you get with flat wire coils all the time. The um, um, flavor picture when do you use Clapton coils is the same crispy high notes, nice medium notes and the bottom notes are there. And you get the density. You just you don't have the spatter and you don't have the heat. Uh, the one thing that sets it a bit apart from, from using a uh, flat wire coil in a regular RDA, uh, uh, from my experience, is a slightly lack of roundness to the taste. Uh, I, I don't know how to explain it other than um, aging of fine liquor, liquor uh, or liqueur the sugary spirits from berries and fruits. Uh, the roundness that comes with age. You have a bit more of that with flat wire coils than a Clapton in this one. But this system is clearly built for Clapton users who want something different than hot, dense and deep bottom notes in their flavors and, and vaping experience. And the Aeronaut, at least this version 2.5, is it. And because me being me, I put Clapton coils in it or else it would be 
pointless for me to use it. And of course I had to put it on a regulated uh, mod with the lights, whistles and bells and it performs spectacular. That was a hit on 150 watts. It's cold and full of flavor and so dense you won't believe it. This is like a, a dual flat coil on a serial mech mode. Uh, except there I'm about uh, 70 ish watts. So of course you suffer in the energy department. Uh, but if you use a, a regulated uh, mod, and especially if you have, have a pulse modulation, uh, volt regulated, or you have preheat function, uh, you won't suffer the lag time of a klepton. Uh, but uh, for all intents and purposes, this uh, RDA is for klepton coil users who don't like it hot and Spattery.